The following meeting is being conducted by electronic means in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, amended for 2020, which explicitly permits a public body to conduct meetings electronically during a state of emergency. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the Coaster and the Asbury Park Press. All notices are on file with the board's secretary. In addition, a notice regarding this virtual meeting and instructions were published in the Asbury Park Press and the City of Asbury Park website. A copy of that notice is on file with the board secretary as well. The notices and the conduct of this meeting are in accordance with the guidelines for virtual meetings issued by the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs. Please note, all microphones of public users are muted until the public question and comment sections. When the public question or comment session is open, you must raise your hand by clicking on the raise hand button on a computer or dialog uh, or dialing uh, asterisk nine on a telephone. When it is your turn to speak, your name or last four digits of your phone number will be called. Your microphone will then be unmuted. If at any time during your question, you are deemed to be out of line or topic, we reserve the right to mute your microphone and will make an announcement that this has occurred. Please turn off all cell phones and electronic devices during the meeting. If you have any background noise at any time during the meeting, please mute yourself. Please identify yourself before you speak at all times as some attendees are attending by telephone only. This meeting is being recorded and will be available to view via APTV. <laughs> Irina. Thank you, Chris. I will take roll now. Christopher Avaloni. Here. Russell Lewis. Russell Lewis. Russell's muted. I'm here. Thank you. Daniel Harris? Yeah. Brittany Ashman? Yeah. Christopher Gonzalez? Here. Joe Potter? Here. Tim Slick? Here. Catherine Minervini? Here. Bonnie Neck? Here. Thank you, everyone. All right. Um, first up. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of June 9th, 2020. I'll second. Thank you. And just uh, to note, the exhibit B1 is the meetings on the screen now. Okay. I have a motion by Christopher Avaloni, a second by Russell Lewis. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. All right, um, one of the topics we have for the agenda is an amendment to our zoning board bylaws. Has everyone on the board had a chance to see the amendment that we're adding to the bylaws? Yes. 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 Has, is, does anyone have any changes or uh, is everyone in agreement with the verbiage? Yes. Yes, I'm fine yes. with it. Yes, I read it. I'm fine with it. Yeah, it's fine. Yes. Fine, I read it. All good. Yes. Okay. Sounds like we have an agreement there, Irina. Do we need to take a vote? Yes, yes please. I need a, a motion and a vote to amend the bylaws to include the uh, recent addition that you just discussed. And that's so I'll make that a motion to amend the bylaws with the uh, recent addition. I'll second. Thank you. I have a motion by Christopher Avaloni, a second by Russell Lewis. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Amendment to the bylaws. Okay. All right. So we have a couple of applications that we need to carry. The first one is for 1302, but I'm recused, so I need a motion for that application to be carried. I'll make a motion. This is Russell Lewis acting as chair. I'll make a motion to carry 1302 Madison Avenue to August 11th, 2020, without further notice. I'll, I'll second that. that. Thank you. I have a motion by Russell Lewis and a second by Brittany Ashman to carry the application to August 11, 2020 without further notice. 
Everyone in favor, except for Christopher Avaloni, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Any opposed? Application carried. Thank you. And I will make a motion to carry uh, uh, the 117 Borden Avenue BBC Capital Group to July 14th, 2020 without further notice. I'll second. Thank you. I have a motion by Christopher Avaloni and a second by Russell Lewis. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Application carried to July 14th, 2020 without further notice. All right, so we have one application to hear tonight, which is 1207, 1207 Berg Street. Um, Mr. Karras, Mr. Vandermark, it's your show. Please uh, start. Uh, Mr. Serpico, do we have all the notices? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, I reviewed the notices in detail. Uh, they're in good order. We have jurisdiction to proceed with the application this evening. I appreciate that. Mr. Karras, you're up. Thank you. Um, Good evening, everybody. Uh, we are here tonight on behalf of an application on behalf of 1207 Berg Street, LLC. My name is Andrew Karras. I'm with the firm Fox Rothschild. I'm representing the applicant, 1207 Berg Street, LLC. The property for which we're here tonight is located, as clearly indicated from the name, 1207 Berg Street. It's block 3505, lot 7. Just to give a little background on the property and what we are looking for tonight, there's an existing two-family dwelling on the property. In terms of the history, there had been an illegal uh, residence in the garage when my client purchased the property, but that has since been removed since it was an illegal residence. So what had been an illegal three-family is now a legal, legal two-family residence. The structure for which we're dealing with is in a deteriorated condition. Um, it is a disheveled, deteriorated structure. You have lot size 2,500 square feet for the property. We're located within R1 zone. It is in the infill area in the waterfront redevelopment. What is being proposed is to essentially renovate the former structure and bring it back to its former glory. And we're going to go through that in a little bit. One thing I do want to mention to the board, if you have driven by the property, you will notice that there has been some work that has been done on the property. That work, though, is pursuant to a zoning permit that was issued and construction permit so as to prevent any further deterioration of the site. That was all approved work that had been done on the property. As I indicated, my client is looking to renovate the property and bring it back to its former glory. What you'll see from the Night in the plans that it's going to be a rather beautiful residence. Just a quick question, Mr. Karras. Sure. Uh, how long has uh, Mr. Vandermark owned this property? Um, not. Since, if we can August swear August. him in, maybe he can answer that probably about a year, if not sure, much. Since August of 2019. Please raise your right hand, Mr. Vandermark. You saw me swear a testimony about giving this man read the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay, please state and spell your name and give us your affiliation with the applicant. Sure. That is Anthony C. Vandermark Jr. Vandermark is V as in Victor, A N D E R M A R K. Uh, this, this evening I'm wearing actually two hats. I'm in a unique position that I am the architect of record uh, and one of the owners of the property, along with my wife, uh, sister, and brother in law. So this is a family affair this evening. Thank you. Mr. Avalon? Um, just another question uh, in regards to the property. Uh, is this property, uh, two family, are, are, is Mr. Vandermark going to be living in this property or is it, uh, so it will be owner occupied? Yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, we, we are not real estate developers and this is not an investment property where we're going to be renting it. This is going to be an owner occupied property by this family. Ah, that's always nice to hear. <laughs> yeah. Okay, if I may. The reason that we're here is that the work that is being done uh, had been deemed originally by the construction official to be an expansion of a non-conforming use since it is a two family uh, residential dwelling, residential structure. In an R1 zone, only one family structures are permitted. So there was a determination that it was an expansion basically because of a dormer that is being put on. 
What I'm going to be doing tonight in my application is requesting one, uh, two things. Number one, I'm going to ask for determination by the board as uh, to an interpretation as to whether or not under the state statute NJSA 40.55 D-70B, it is a, uh, an expansion of a non-conforming use or whether or not it is an essential, essentially it is negligible or insubstantial, so as not to qualify as an expansion of a non-conforming use. In the application that I had submitted, I cited a number of cases that pertain to that, particularly the Lehan case, Lehan versus the Atlantic Highlands Zoning Board of Adjustment, 252 New Jersey Super 392, Pell Division 1991. And in that particular case, there are renovations that were being done to a multifamily, multifamily dwelling. The determination was that since it was not an intensification of the site, it did not qualify as an expansion of a non-conforming use. They were doing a significant amount of interior renovations to the property. However, one thing that is notable in that is that what they had done with the renovations in the Lehan case, separate and apart from the interior renovations, they had added uh, a significant amount of cubic square footage to the third floor, which the court had deemed to markedly change the appearance and the size of that floor in the house. In terms, what the court concluded was, it was the other interior renovations were not an expansion, but just that part of the construction was deemed to be an expansion of a non-conforming use. In our particular case, we'll provide testimony that the dormer is not a markedly change of appearance or of size of the floor or the house. In turn, our position is that it is not an expansion of a non-conforming use. In fact, the total square footage of the house is being decreased. If the board decides that it is an expansion of a non-conforming use, we're still seeking in this application a variance under D2 for an expansion of a non-conforming use. And we'll be calling our planner, Mr. Culling, to testify as that. With that being said, um, what I'll do is I'll get directly to the testimony. There's variance relief that is being requested, but it's all existing uh, non-conformities that we have, or a decrease actually in the non-conformities um, that appear at the site. Um, just to go through those briefly, we have lot area of 2,500. It's not changing. The required is 5,000. Side yard setbacks of uh, 1.6 feet and 4 feet on the other side. Required 6 feet on each side, 14 combined. Not changing. Front yard setback, 25 is required. It's at 11.7. That is not changing. Same with the rear yard setback, you're right up against the property line at 0 0.3 feet. Required is 25, but it's not changing at all. Lot depth is not changing, it's at 50 feet. The density is not changing, it's 2.0, uh, is existing under the uh, building units. It's at one and that uh, one is required as a max, that's not changing. The FAR 0.5 is allowed. Um, we have existing 1.05 that's actually being reduced to 1.04. Similarly, with building coverage, 25 max is allowed. Without the, uh, the deck, it's at 54%. We're lowering that to 53%, including the deck goes from 67 to 66. The height is the same. We're actually adding a parking space to the site. In terms of the testimony that will be presented, as the board will see, we're decreasing the intensity of the site. We're not increasing it, uh, anything to require variance relief or additional variance relief. With that being said, what I'm going to do is call my client, Anthony Vandermark, who happens to be also one of the members of the entity that owns the property, who's also a licensed partner. I believe he's been sworn, so I think we can yes, get right yes. to his qualifications. That would be fine, Mr. Harris. Thank you. Anthony? Sure. Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you all for being here. Um, I am a licensed architect in the state of New Jersey. My license is in good standing. License number 17698. Um, I am also licensed in the states of New York, Pennsylvania, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Um, I graduated the New Jersey Institute of Technology in 1995. Um, I have testified in front of uh, dozens of uh, zoning and planning boards across the state of New Jersey, uh, to name a few. Uh, Jersey City, Hoboken, the city of Bayonne. Thank you, Mr. Vandermark. That's, that's fine. Thank you very we much. We accept your credentials. <laughs> much appreciated. Mr. Vandermark, you're obviously familiar with this property, am I correct? I believe I'm too familiar with this property, correct? All right. Um, and you prepared plans relative to the work that is being proposed at this property, correct? That is correct. 
And I believe we've identified that previously as A1, the last revision date of March 3rd of 2020. If we can do a share screen and bring those up. I am not permitted yet. Irina? Irina's on mute. Got it. Go ahead, Mr. Vandermark. Excellent. Okay, just to recap that um, the existing property at 1207 Berg Street uh, is in the renovation infill area of Waterfront Redevelopment Plan. Um, subject property is outlined in red here. Um, you are on the western side of Berg Street. Just so we're clear, that had previously been marked as <laughs> two for identification, that aerial photograph. Okay, go ahead. We are approximately mid-block uh, in between 4th Avenue, which is to the south, and 5th Avenue to the right, which is on the north, uh, a half a block uh, to Sunset Lake. Um, we have 50 feet of frontage, uh, as Mr. Karras uh, had explained, by 50 feet in depth. Um, this particular immediate neighborhood is, is a real mixed bag. Um, and, you know, we, we think uh, at one time, uh, this house stood alone, it was very prominent. Um, before all the subdivisions actually uh, packed in these structures uh, into the neighborhood here. Immediately to our south on our side of the block uh, is the Shoreview Condominium uh, apartment building. Uh, that is three stories tall and it, it, it's separated from our property, uh, as you can see, by uh, a curb cut and also a parking lot. Uh, immediately to our north is a uh, two-story single-family house, which is literally uh, six feet away from uh, our building line. Um, on our corner to the north is, again, a single-family two-story house. Directly to our rear, uh, approximately uh, four inches, um, we are four inches from the property line, is a three-story Capri Terrace uh, condominium. In the foreground across the street on the southeast corner is a three-family multifamily. Directly across the street is a two-story um, single-family, and you have the uh, large parking lot of the Asbury Lane. Uh, we have the large parking lot of the Asbury Lanes, and in the foreground is the Asbury Hotel. This was a, a, a very prominent structure at one time. Um, we're clear, if we were to look at A1 for identification, this is on page EXC. There are a number of photographs that are attached to the site plan, and these are the color photographs of what we see on the site plan as A1. Go ahead, Anthony. That's correct, thank you. Um, the house was constructed, at least from what I can see online, uh, from, it was either 1910 or 1921 or somewhere in that time period. However, if you go to the waterfront uh, redevelopment plan, uh, 1885 map, it appears that there is a building on this property very similar uh, to the shape of 1207, as you see before you. So this, this, this structure, the original structure, uh, you know, may date back, uh, predate 1885. As you can see, uh, this is uh, prior to um, some of the structural repairs and the renovation that we're doing right now. It, th this this two-family structure, which is the principal house, has fallen into complete disrepair. Um, the previous uh, owners have neglected uh, this structure uh, over the course of many years. Um, they did the absolute minimum to this house uh, to maintain occupancy uh, uh, in the house. Um, however, uh, it, it was in, in, in structural failure in certain areas. Um, I have some pre-existing photographs of, of the roof and some of the conditions inside the house that I want to discuss. Here in the what foreground- is that Mr. Vandenberg, if I can interrupt you for one second. What is that structure to the left of the house? Is that, was that a garage or yeah, was it- Yeah, yes. I, I, I was gonna get into that. Um, this is the illegal uh, third unit, which they somehow converted uh, a garage slash carriage house uh, into a, a third unit. And here in between the two structures, they infilled in between the two structures with a galley kitchen. So as part of the- It looks tiny. It, it, it was eight, it's eight feet high by eight feet wide. And the galley kitchen uh, had a footprint of 41 square feet. And the galley kitchen was approximately <laughs> four feet wide by, uh, you know, uh, 20 feet in length. Um, you know, e even, even if the, the, the 
carriage house or this, this unit number three uh, was deemed legal, um, we had no intention of actually renting this out. Uh, it, it's absolutely ridiculous. So when we did acquire the property, we agreed that uh, we would eliminate this third unit. Um, also, as you can see that the, the, the house style, uh, I think originally might've been some form of transitional uh, art <laughs> design. However, a lot of the details uh, are now missing. But as you can see in these long roof eaves here, and also the bracketing around the roof line, that this may have been arts and crafts. I don't think this is the original porch, uh, you know, to the, the, the original structure here, you know, because they did infill uh, the railing system and everything else. We have uh, asbestos uh, siding and interior was filled with lead-based paint, mold, um, and all sorts of uh, water damage. Uh, subject property has a main gable that runs from the east to the west. Um, it has a cantilevered uh, gable on the southern side. And what we're looking to do this evening is there's a pre-existing shed dormer uh, that's on the northern side uh, of the roof line. We're looking to convert that shed dormer uh, into a dormer and thus is the reason why uh, we're here tonight as an expansion of a non-conforming structure. Um, here, as you can see that they have uh, over time cut many holes in this roof, um, and we can now see that the uh, structural deflection uh, here on the porch. This is the intent uh, of the final. Wow. <laughs> this is the- Don't show your there. cards. Don't show your cards, Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> So what you're looking at is a, a three-dimensional um, photorealistic rendering, uh, you know, plopped into a, a photograph. So uh, these photos have been identified as A3. Go ahead. Here to the northern side is the new dormer edition. Um, we are adding uh, a five by 12 footprint, approximately 60 square feet uh, to the edge in line with the face of the northern side of the house. We are not breaking the eave line and that equates to uh, six habitable square feet by your ordinance. That's how much uh, habitable square footage you're actually adding to the property. Um, we are proposing a black standing seam roof uh, with aluminum clad um, divided, true divided light windows. Um, we are proposing a second floor walkout um, above the original porch footprint um, with an open trellis, uh, non-closed with a profiled um, trellis edge. Uh, we are now removing uh, that closed railing. Um, we are repairing all the foundations uh, in the porch and we are creating an open balustrade. All of the retaining walls on the property are being restored as well as the house foundation. Uh, the original house, uh, approximately one third of the original house had to be underpinned. Uh, all of that work has since been done. Um, majority of the floor joists uh, had to be replaced. Um, so we, are, we have come a long way uh, already as part of this renovation. We were very fortunate. Uh, subject property, as you, to the left, you have the existing survey. Um, and, and, and I just want to identify this. We're back to A1, the plans. Go ahead. We have the original uh, survey for the property, um, 1.7 feet uh, to the left, si the left side, which is the southern side, or 3 feet 10 uh, to the northern side here at the side yard. We are four inches uh, off of the rear property line and 11 foot seven inches uh, to the front property line. So the front property line is not- There, just a bit of parking. You're not changing the, just, just uh, to interrupt you one second. You're, you're not changing the footprint of this house at all though, correct? You're not well, increasing well, it? No, we're not. All we're doing is actually eliminating, um, you see this was the actual galley kitchen uh, here. And we're also going to eliminate this portion of this exterior deck. So, so in essence, you're, you're decreasing the footprint, correct? Yeah, we're decreasing uh, the lot coverage by 80 square feet here. And I, I will show an amendment uh, to the plans to actually show that we are reducing uh, this uh, area of the deck by 39 square feet and already we've removed that galley kitchen of the third unit. So although it was illegal, we we're physically removing the third unit, thus uh, lessening the intensity of the property. 
the original structure, uh, when acquired, uh, was a top bottom. Um, I was able to actually switch that to a two family side by side. Um, we are family. No one wanted to be on the bottom, especially me. So both families are now side by side. Uh, we both have two floors with the northern unit actually getting the third floor attic space. Um, that is my brother and sister-in-law because they do have three kids. Um, as part of this proposal, uh, again, I'm going to be converting the garage. Will you be converting the garage back to a garage? Or? The garage did not... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Harris. I, un I muted your microphone because we're getting some background noise. You can unmute your microphone at any time during the meeting when you want to speak. Thank you. Sorry about that. It's okay. It, we are converting um, the third unit back into a garage. Technically, the dimensions of the garage don't qualify for it to be a parking space. However, it is big enough for you to get a compact or some compact car in that garage. What are the dimensions of that garage? The uh, dimensions yeah. of that garage are uh, the outer dimension is at nine feet. The interior dimension uh, is at eight feet. And you're at approximately uh, 18 feet in depth here. So it's sufficient for a compact car, correct? Yeah, it's sufficient for a compact car, you know, at, at five, six, uh, you know, 14 feet. Um, the original um, carriage house unit had a full bathroom. We are going to eliminate the shower in that bathroom and just have a half bath uh, back in the garage. The existing property uh, has a, uh, a rear deck. Um, as you can see, it hovers approximately three feet um, above uh, the Capri Terrace, uh, both driveway aisle and also, um, uh, you know, parking lot. Um, this balcony is, is uh, not private. Um, these are the cantilever balconies to keep Capri Terrace actually uh, look over uh, onto this proposed deck. So what we're looking to do is we're looking to eliminate uh, 39 square feet of that deck area. We are looking to provide a privacy screen here. And then also we want to uh, have a covered porch uh, with a closed railing here. So, uh, you know, cars as they're traveling in the evening, we don't want the headlights actually shining on that deck. So we are going to, you know, we're, we're going to add this closed railing system and for privacy sake and also security, uh, we're, we're looking to have a roof over, you know, this, this open deck area. So that's an amendment that we're making to the plans. This does not change um, the habitable square footage and it does not change. It actually, we're still reducing the overall lot coverage uh, by 80 square feet. Second floor, uh, again, uh, the two units are side by side. Um, we, we have two bedrooms apiece, uh, both the north and the south unit. Um, we are proposing a, uh, a walkout uh, second floor uh, roof deck, which is above the original footprint of the porch. Um, we did not propose swing doors onto this porch. Uh, part of the redevelopment plan uh, talks about that all doors have to be swing doors. We didn't want either uh, the encroachment of the swing to be either onto the deck or either of these bedroom spaces. Therefore, we were requesting a design waiver for sliding door there. Uh, we also think the sliding door is more appropriate for waterproofing uh, of the facade at the second floor. Third floor, um, and by ordinance, it is a third floor. Uh, the shaded area here on the third floor is a five by 12 uh, area that's going to be part of the new dormer. The new dormer will be in line with the edge of the house uh, at the northern face. As you can see below here is the footprint of the new dormer and the roof eave will continue uh, as originally uh, intended as part of the architecture. By adding that roof dorm, that, that adds to the symmetry of the building, am I correct? It, it absolutely adds to the architecture of the building. Right now, you have a main gable with one gable from the south attached to the ridge line. This will now provide a kind of a four gabled approach, which is uh, a term in architecture, and it'll add balance to the facade. Um, here in the lower left-hand corner, you're looking at the habitable area uh, of the third floor. So if you see this, 
the new gable here at the uh, at the northern side of the property line, um, it adds balance to the house in both directions. So now you know you have a main gable, and then you have a southern and a northern gable. Um, this is a front facade. The, the, the entry stairs are being moved from the south part of the property to the central location, uh, thus approaching the two units uh, from the center. Um, the balustrade will be opened up. Uh, we're providing all new landscaping and again, restoration of all the foundation walls uh, and retaining walls in the property. Over here to the left, as you can see, unit number three uh, will be converted back into uh, a garage slash carriage house. Uh, there will be a, a painted uh, aluminum door uh, on that structure. Again, two dimensional elevations. Here is the new dormer on the northern elevation. This is the open balustrade on the second floor with a profiled um, uh, trellis raptor uh, as a cap. That will be open air though. We, we just wanted to provide a little bit of sun protection, uh, you know, early time of the day. This property is limited. Um, as you can see, we, we have a, no rear yard, we have no side yards and a very limited front yard. Uh, we, we really needed a private kind of secure space, uh, you know, A, for the kids and also, uh, you know, our dogs. Um, so we needed some place to congregate. Um, so we think the second floor is going to be that place. This is the elevation of the north. We removed the uh, single family uh, adjacent property. So you can see the elevation to the north, uh, the open balustrade, as I just discussed, um, and also the new proposed dormer. Side elevations, again, we are going to cut this deck um, and again, uh, improve this foundation, which is already completed uh, and protect this for privacy and security with a roof line. The existing house now um, is structurally safe. Uh, again, we have underpinned uh, one third of the house and replaced the majority of the floor joists. And also, if you take a quick look at this, is that we replaced the northern half, this is a photograph taken by myself during the, uh, some of the restoration. All of these roof rafters um, are, as you can see, splitting uh, in failure. So we had to physically reconstruct the northern side of the roof and all of the, uh, all the eave, uh, the roof rakes here. This was the original roof tear off. Um, Again, we had to replace uh, the majority of this northern side of the roof. You can see here the original shed dormer that we're looking to replace and balance this roof, uh, this dormer, uh, which is to the north. Um, just to talk about neglect of this property, um, most houses have a layer, maybe two layers of shingles. This house um, has six layers of asphalt shingles on it. Um, the weight of the shingle itself caused roof failure. And again, uh, there, there was water penetration all over the roof. Just one thing to note when we go back to this photograph is that this house at one time had a second floor open porch. As you can see, these, these roof rafters are painted. This is the clapboard from the original house. So we think that this house at one time, at the very least, had a very big footprint uh, porch on the first floor and a second floor outdoor porch that overlooked the north. You would never intend to do that right now because you are six feet away from the adjacent property here in the north. Okay. Where will you put your HVAC equipment, Mr. Vandermark? That's a very good question. If you don't mind me just skipping back. The HVAC equipment is located, there, there is a flat section of roof um, above the second floor. Uh, it is gonna go, it is on the southern and western uh, side of the house. They're gonna go here. And, and one of the comments in the report was that um, it would be very nice if these were screened. Uh, by all means, we're gonna provide an AZEC screen around these units. So you're not gonna be able to see them from the condominium project to the west. southern side of the house. And one of the reasons why we're here this evening is, is, is we, we, we're, we're looking to seek approval to, to complete the, you know, the renovation that we originally started here. And you know, I, I asked the board to just assist us 
um, to continue to keep moving forward with this. Thank you. You had a chance uh, to review with me the planner's report, am I correct? Yes, I have. And I believe that's been identified as B2 for identification? Yes, B2. Okay. I just want to go through some of those comments briefly with you, okay? Before you, you go on with that, Mr. Karras, sure. uh, uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, the roofing material is a metal roof, is that correct, Mr. Vandermark? Yes, it is a black CNC uh, aluminum roof. So um, it, that's an unusual roof for the neighborhood. Um, I, I, you know, as part of the district, it's probably the only one in that part that neighborhood which would have a black metal roof. Um, I, I, I don't know, you know, how that fits in with the rest of the neighborhood, but um, I, and how the rest of the board feels. But um, I, I ask. Is that an issue, Donna, that we would be um, have to address? We could, we'd be requesting an exception let's get, on that. Let's get Donna under oath. Donna, please raise your right hand. Raising. Do you solemnly swear the testimony about the given this matter be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please identify yourself and your affiliation with the board. Donna Miller, board planner. Uh, so, Mr. Chair, um, I do identify in the report that um, the waterfront redevelopment plan design guidelines um, talk about different certain color palette that's preferred. Uh, the black and white is not really the combination that's preferred. Um, so they would need a design exception uh, unless there's another another uh, color that they can they can um, provide. Um, I just want to clarify, Mr. Vandermark, uh, so you've already installed these windows, the, the black metal frame windows? That's correct. So we're kind of little cart and horse. Uh, if, if I can just respond, um, in the architectural design guidelines of the redevelopment plan, um, you know, you, you talk about the, the predominant um, you know, Mediterranean Revival, arts and crafts. However, in the redevelopment plan, it specifically states, the guidelines encourage the expression of these styles in a modern and contemporary way appropriate to new oceanfront architecture. So, while yes, it's not part of the traditional palette, um, I feel that the, you know, the white um, cement board uh, siding, as well as the board and batten with the black roof it's just more of a, uh, a slightly modern expression uh, that would be, you know, uh, on a, uh, a restored uh, arts and crafts uh, transitional house. So, uh, yeah. hey, would you agree that interpretation of the waterfront redevelopment plan is basically subjective based upon how you view it architecturally, correct? Correct. Well, the board has to agree with that presumption. It also, in the architectural guidelines, you do have, um, they have noted galvanized metal roof, mm -hmm. um, which is like a, it's, it's almost a zinc color. Right. Um, so, you know, we're not too far off from, you know, a, a silver charcoal gray color to a black um, as far as roofing material, but uh, in color, but the material itself is, is, is virtually the same. Is I think there, that's something for the board to have to consider. Um, Chris, are there different guidelines for this district as opposed to the rest of the neighborhoods in town? I think Don is a better person to answer that question, but. Well, so this is in the waterfront redevelopment renovation infill. The plan does not specifically um, you know, dissect those two areas. It just gives us architectural guidelines right. for the entire redevelopment area. For the right, yeah, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Well, I have a quick question about the metal roof. Um, you don't see them very often, and I know them to be loud. Is there a reason why? I, I know they also have a, a longer life than an asphalt. I'm assuming, is that is that why you went with the metal roof, or is it more the contemporary look of it? Uh, it, it, it's it's a twofold thing. Yes, um, you know you, you do get a, a very long life out of a standing seam roof. 
but also it's the expression, you know, of the architecture uh, as well, um, and, and the color palette. Um, you know, myself and my architectural firm are um, known for some of our very um, expressive modern projects, um, and you know, this arts and crafts house, and this is. Uh, Part of the identity, um, you know, that, that I wanted for the house, and also as a reflection of me. And can you can you elaborate a little bit on on the noise or lack of noise? I know uh, well, if you brainstorm, they could get pretty loud. Right. I mean, it, you know, it, yes, it, it'll be slightly louder, um, uh, you know, than an asphalt shingle roof. Um, but it, it, I don't think, especially you know, at this pitch. Uh, you're going to get a heavy thumping uh, of the roof. Any of the flat areas or roof on this property uh, will have, uh, you know, a standard um, either uh, rubber roof uh, or a torch down roof that will have uh, minimal noise impact. So again, I, you know, I think at this pitch, uh, I think a standing seam roof is not going to, it's not going to give off, uh, you know, a tremendous amount of noise. If these roof pitches were slightly uh, shallower, uh, potentially yes. I have a comment on the roof, Bonnie, just to help anyone else that doesn't have, I actually have a, sh a pretty big shed in our backyard with a metal roof. Mm -hmm. It's got a very, very steep pitch and it's not loud at all. Okay, so, so it's all I've been in there and also I've been outside and it's not like I could even hear it. Okay. Yeah, um, so I, I, if that helps. I'm going to also have to chime in here because obviously I have my black casement windows right behind <laughs> me and my black metal wall right behind me. And I have a black standing metal um, roof around my uh, wraparound porch of my house. And um, I'll admit that one of the reasons why I put that roof in is so I could hear the rain mm -hmm. fall on it. It's actually beautiful to lay in any one of my bedrooms on the second floor and hear the rain fall on that metal roof. My neighbors can't hear it at all. Um, <laughs> I, personally, I, I think this design's beautiful. I don't have a problem with the black casement windows. Uh, standing seam metal roofs were used in you know farmhouses and barns and and so many beautiful architecture from from this era. Um, I, I don't find it loud on on that level. Um, I, I I just have to chime in and think uh, and say I think it's really beautiful. Mr. Lewis, are those the black casement windows right behind you? Those are black casement <laughs> windows right behind me. Yes. If I may interject, um, my wife is from Florida, so we go down there a few times every year, and actually I was over her cousins and it was raining very hard and I didn't even know there was a metal roof until they told me. And it wasn't that I asked, but um, it's just a, a conversation came up about hurricanes and they were like glad that they had metal roofs. And I was like, you got a metal roof? So there wasn't like a lot of ting, 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 but I agree with Russell, it is a nice sound. Thank you. Any other comments on the roof? Uh, yes. Um, this is a, a two-family uh, house, right? Correct. Correct. Who's going to have the access to the uh, third floor? The northern unit, unit number two. Um, we have the, uh, my brother and sister-in-law have three kids, uh, so therefore they get access to uh, three floors and my wife and I, without kids, will have access to the southern portion, which is two floors. Um, and you are basically um, maintaining the color of the previous house, right? The previous house was also white? The previous asbestos shingle uh, was a white, off-white color, correct? Okay, no more questions. Thank you. Anyone else on the roof? I, Anthony, what I'd like to do is take you through the report then and let's go to page three of the report, off street parking. You indicated that the garage is being converted back or the what had been an illegal unit is being converted back to what appears to have been a garage. Am I correct? That's correct. So that adds an additional parking space to the property whereby currently existing you have one. So that will add a second parking space to the property, correct? Correct. 
Continuing on, uh, the facade color on page four, I believe we've covered. Hang on, uh, hang on. Uh, sorry, Andy, it's Donna. Uh, so I just want to go back and clarify that about the parking stall in the garage. Um, so I know uh, Mr. Vandermark had given us some dimensions on the interior of that space. So there's also a full bathroom, uh, so shower stall, sink, and commode. Uh, in that space as well. And, and, and I just testified that that was going to be uh, converted into just a powder room. The shower is going to be eliminated. Okay. Um, and it'll just be a sink and a toilet uh, at the back end of the garage. But the is the volume changing? No, the volume is not changing. Uh, we are not expanding the footprint of that garage. Um, and the volume of the bathroom itself is not changing as well. Okay, so the space between the doors for the bathroom and the uh, the man door on the side to get out of the of the space. Um, can you tell me what that dimension is? Uh, sure. Sorry. So the dimension from the bathroom wall to the garage door itself? No, the man door. The, the man door here. Where it swings in, yeah. Okay, uh, that dimension would be, and again, I, I apologize, it's not dimensioned on the plans. Uh, that looks to be uh, approximately 17 feet. Okay, but so if the bathroom door is open and the man door is open, I'm thinking it's more like 14 feet. Sure, correct. Okay. So I just want to bring that to the board's attention that, you know, in order for it to be, you know, usable um, as a parking space, it's really not meeting the, the minimum criteria. I mean, it's a pretty small car. Uh, what is the requirement, Donna? For, is it, for a garage or is it a standard space? Say again, is for it to be counted as a parking space, it has to be, you know, minimum eight and a half by 18. We're half a foot off. Yeah, and, 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 and I can also testify to is that I, lake, at least. I could so, create a pocket door on the bathroom itself, uh, therefore eliminating the in-swing uh, into the garage space. That could help. Yes. Uh, I don't know, can the uh, man door be an outswing door? But keep in uh, mind, you don't, you don't need that uh, side door for, a, a lot of garages, old garages, have access from the side. You can access the garage through the garage door itself while that door is closed. So it's just for the board to consider as to its utility as a, you know, a real parking space. You know, right now, all you have is one, so it adds an additional space. Um, granted, it's a little bit smaller, but it adds an additional space where there is none on the property. Agreed. And again, I, you know, I appreciate that this is for the Vandermark's family, immediate family, their extended family. You know, again, it doesn't matter. There may be people after the Vandermark's who will use this property. Okay. You know, it has to be able to be utilized by anybody. So credit for a legitimate parking space has to be, you know, meeting the criteria for a legitimate parking space. If the board finds that, you know, because of how the property is being used, it's unique, um, you know, configuration, the size of the lot, the size of the structure, all of those things count as credit toward the grant of, in this case would be a design exception. It's not a variance, it's a lower, you know, it's a much lower bar. And, you know, the board just has to make that finding. I'm just Were there any that it you know it doesn't meet the criteria. Okay. Right. Were there any plans to remove that bathroom? No. How many bathrooms are there in uh, each unit? Uh, the northern side has two and a half, and the southern side has one and a half. Mm. You know the fact the fact that we have children in the family. Um, really, the intent was is that. You know, coming back from the beach that 
you know, they, you know, could use that toilet as opposed to running through the house. Um, so we, we just found it to be more convenient so that the mess would stay there as opposed to inside. I understand that, but as you know, parking is very limited in that area, being so close to the beach and the hotel right there. Um, I strongly think that needs to be a legitimate parking spot since you already have so many other bathrooms. Well, it's not the depth. I mean, the depth at 18 feet is legitimate parking space. It's the width. It's the width. There's nothing that can be done to create a wider garage. If we, and in terms of access to the bathroom, if you create a pocket door, then you're not going to have that swing to the bathroom. And you can always gain access to the garage with the garage door as opposed to the man door on the side. I, I, I thought it was I, eight I and a half ask. by 18, Donna. Did I hear you wrong? Sorry. Uh, you know, I, I, I can also- It was 14 <laughs> feet wide, long and 18 is required. So nice. if, if they don't, if it doesn't matter that the man door be functional while there's a car inside, that's what the board has to find. I can also swing that door out. Um, I can swing that door <laughs> out. Swing. Um, so the thing is, the interior dimension is only eight foot clear. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So, you know, it's for a parking space and a parking lot, that's allowed as long as you have enough, you know, backup length to make the maneuvering. So in this case, it's more of a, well, can I really get the door open problem? So um, the board- We can adjust that by changing board, that man door to make it swing out and doing a pocket door in the bathroom. Right, so the board can say, you know, eight feet is a little tight for the interior width, but um, there's, it's not enough of a benefit to make that space wider. I mean, if you had to enlarge that garage space, you would take away the, you know, that open space you're creating between the garage and the house that used to be a kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it would probably conflict with, you know, the nice uh, overhang you're getting with the, uh, with the second floor. And, you know, that space would now be diminished. Mm -hmm. uh, for the sake of, oh, I want, you know, an extra eight to six inches of width in that parking space. So these are all things the board can say, yes, that's acceptable. We grant the, you know, the exception. So how wide is that? You said, I heard 14 feet from door to door. If you have a swing door on the bathroom and you have an in-swing door for that man door on the side of the garage. There's only about 14 feet clear. The architect has said he can make the man door an outswing door and he can make the bathroom door a pocket door. That would have removed the conflicts with the interior dimensions and then you would have a long enough space. All right, thank you. Which we'll stipulate to. I already have it written down in the facts. Thank you, Jack. Uh, this is Donegan. I mean, they still, as a two-family house, they need three off-street parking spaces. They're still going to have that deficiency. You know, maybe it's in the real world application, you know, it's a technicality. In the real world, if they have small enough cars, they may be able to get three cars off the street. But technically, you've got a non-conforming use with two families with a parking deficiency, correct? Exactly. Existing. So... Okay, let's keep going. Okay, thank you. Please proceed. Thank you. Going to page four, four A facade color we've dealt with. The windows, I believe we've already dealt with. Page five, the sliding doors, we've already dealt with. The fence. Anthony, can you go through what is being proposed with regard to the fence on the side of the property? Uh, sure. Um, The existing property uh, already has a six foot high um, opaque PVC fence, both to the southern side and here at the northern gate line. Um, we were just simply proposing to add to it here at the northern line um, and leave it alone. Um, as part of the planning report, 
Um, a wood stockade uh, board on board fence uh, would be more appropriate. Um, if the board sees fit and that's something, um, you know, that, that they want as part of the uh, subject to approval, uh, you know, we would agree to that. Um, it, it's just that, you know, it's, it, it's, it's just adding, um, you know, a little bit more work. But you'd have no objection to adding a wood stockade fence in place of the existing vinyl that you have, am I correct? No, I do not. Okay. With regard to F, the rooftop equipment, the screening we've already covered. The, so, the is there another question? Sure. It's Donna again. Can you back up to the windows? Can, can Mr. Vandermark just um, point out which are the awning windows? Sure. Uh, this sketch? Yes. So we have uh, a ribbon of awning window here, a ribbon of awning window here, and a ribbon of awning window here. Um, an awning window is similar to a casement, however, the hinge happens to be in a different location. Um, as per the redevelopment plan, you want uh, a square aesthetic with divided light. Um, these could have very well been um, just a very small casement window with the same exact appearance. Um, I, I, I don't see uh, any harm uh, with awning windows. It, it happens to be uh, an expression of some of the architecture that I put together is that I, I enjoy having an awning window uh, high, you know, above the bed line in, in most bedrooms. Um, so I, I don't see as that as being um, a detriment to the architecture and or uh, architectural details of the redevelopment plan. And we'd request an exception to the, uh, to the design elements that are required. And it's, it's on both sides though, right? North and south? Yes. So, okay. Go to page five, the siding style. Why don't you touch upon that a little bit? Sure. Um, yeah, in the report, uh, I had mentioned uh, historically uh, the siding would be of a very thin height and profile. Um, that would be four inches. Uh, what we have uh, uh, being installed on the house is, uh, is a five uh, and, a, and a half uh, vertical height uh, uh, of aesthetic, which is the absolute minimum uh, vertical uh, cement board plank siding you can get. Um, so, you know, we're, we're about an inch to an inch and a half off of, of lap for a, from a historical standpoint in detail. Um, you know, but again, uh, you know, from a material standpoint, I, I, I think there's no better choice for this house. Um, some of the other uh, comments were, um, you know, what exactly is happening at the base um, we are wrapping um, each window picked with a picture frame of an AZAC wrap. Um, you know, it's not 100% accurate here that we, we will also be uh, panelizing the AZAC, uh, you know, at the smaller bay extensions. Um, the larger bay here will have a AZAC wrap at the windows and at the door frames. However, the siding will run up in between. With regard to the site design, there are a few comments with regard to the plantings on there. Um, it indicates limited planting design is not atypical of the architectural period that the building renovation hopes to represent. Um, there is a suggestion of greater area of plantings on the front yard consisting of evergreens and deciduous shrubs to complement the architectural style of the building. Any objection to that or do you want to comment on that? Uh, not at all. Um, we originally chose natural grasses, uh, you know, for the front, uh, front lawn and, and front landscaping. Um, we just, uh, I thought it was uh, appropriate. You see them all up and down Kingsley, and I thought it was, you know, something that, uh, you know, it's kind of a signature of Asbury Park. But we, we have no problem uh, putting in uh, evergreen uh, plantings in front of the house, uh, you know, to return it back to, uh, you know, what would have been there historically. Not a problem. And comment 4.2 is just to add certain notes or details pertaining to the plantings, proposed plantings. No objection to that, correct? No objection. And lastly, with stormwater, there's a comment that uh, applicants should consider permeable pavement, consider installing gutters to collect the roof runoff that may be directed to the front yard planter and lawn area. Can you comment on that, please? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. I think on the long runs of the eastern, western, uh, excuse me, the, the east, 
to west facade here, these long eaves we have. The edge of this uh, roof rake, um, this rafter is very, very thin. Um, it almost is reduced down to approximately two inches. If you added a gutter uh, to this roof line here, all you're really gonna see is now this, this kind of bulkiness uh, of the profile of the gutter. Um, and I don't think it would be appropriate um, historically uh, to have a gutter line on both of these long runs of, of, uh, of roof line. Um, you know, at the lower roofs and also at the uh, garage roof, uh, yes, we will be providing gutters. However, I, I don't think it would be appropriate um, by adding the mass of a gutter to uh, these two long runs of uh, roof. Line. What about Donna? permeable pavement? Sorry, before you go on, Don, is that what's common in that this neighborhood for gutters on roofs like this? Well, I mean, there is no common, uh, you know, historically not, you know, roof gutters were not common. They were expensive, you know, so you had to be a pretty wealthy design to, to include round gutters. Uh, and then with the, the undercroft, the way it's designed, yeah, it makes it really complicated to do. Um, I don't know if, I, I really don't know what the architectural solution is. Um, there may be, you know, if we can catch whatever we can catch kind of approach, uh, or if there's a way on the, um, on the north side, uh, since, um, you know, that's gonna be just lawn area on the side of the house, you know, since that's where the rainfall is gonna basically sheet off the roof, uh, if it's a stone trench or something like that, uh, to allow, you know, at least to collect and not just sheet onto the neighbor. You know, and then do like an under drain and um, to the front. That, that is something that we would agree to, sure. One of my questions was, is there going to be runoff into your neighbor's yard? I think there already is, Dan. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a pre-existing condition. You know, it, this is kind of a lesser of all evils here. Uh, whether, you know, we, we, we put a gutter on a historical roof line to collect the water or we allow the water to do what it's been doing for, uh, you know, 100, 150 years now. This is Donna. Okay. I, I would I would suggest though that if it were not a standing seam metal roof, and trust me, I'm a big fan of, of a metal roof. Just not a fan of the black. Just you know, like galvanized would be awesome, or some you know colored uh, from that from that uh, excerpt in the plan. Um, but uh, if it were an asphalt sing shingle roof, they could use deflectors so that. Uh, you know, goes more toward the back or to the front. I mean, it's not a great solution either because there's just not enough room around the house, but um, it could reduce some of the impact on that uh, north neighbor. Okay, thank you. The, the best solution may be uh, to let it sheet flow off straight down into a stone trench with an under drain that directs it, you know, toward, toward the front yard into that planter area. We're good with that, right, Anthony? Absolutely. Okay. I would um, have to agree with Donna on that. I also agree. I agree with Donna as well, but I disagree. I love the I love the black roof. So, <laughs> but I have one. So. <laughs> yeah, I love the black roof too, and I have I a black really open. Sharp, and I think it's a really nice nod to historical times with a really nice modern. Uh, modern look and feel, aesthetic. I, I like it a lot. And you sleep well in the rain. I have, I have gutters on my metal roof with rain chains, just saying. <laughs> I think that covers the report. Now, I would have one other witness, Ed Kohling. Um, it's up to the board what they want to do, obviously. Um, I have made the application twofold. Number one, that based upon um, case law is not an expansion of a non-conforming use. In turn, we do not need a two, uh, D2 variance. I do have our planner available to testify in the event we do need a D2 variance. So does the board prefer to hear from the planner first before making that determination? Do they first want to make the determination with regard to whether or not a D2 variance is required? 
uh, what would be a more appropriate way of, of, of viewing this, Jack? I think that's a better question for you. Um, well, I suggest you, you can you deal with the issue of whether or not a variance is required. However, due to the comments that have been made by the board members, I don't know that you're going to need a lot of planning testimony. You know, let me let me do this. Let me get through it pretty quickly then. Okay. Uh, hang on, Andy, just a second, because I know we've kind of been. I'm sorry, this is Donna. Um, mm -hmm. Mr. Vandenberg testified as the architect and the owner. Correct. We have not, and we've all had a free kind of kind of flowing conversation or reviewed the comments of my report. We have not yet had cross of him as an architect. True. Right. Public. So I think before you move on to any kind of summation or, or characterization of the interpretation, maybe we should sure. do that. Okay. Well, absolutely, Donna. But yeah, let's um, get the, let's find out. I think I think first we have to make sure that the board's questions are all answered before we move on to the general public. Right. So um, has everyone gotten a chance to ask Mr. Vandermark any more questions regarding his design um, and architectural concept? I, I have a take question. each one independently. I have a question. This is Russell Lewis. Um, Mr. Vandermark, you, you had testified that there was some portion of the structure that was going to be covered and built in to shield from um, car lights and so forth. That I, 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 and I'm, I'm just wanting to return to that because it was the only thing that I'm not clear about. Sure. So at the, at the first floor, and if I go back to, okay, we, we had a pre-existing. And uh, this is, what, what elevation is this? This is the Western elevation, rear facade. Okay. We, we had a three and a half foot wide deck um, that runs approximately half of the house and then wrapped forward um, and terminated at that kitchen uh, for the illegal third unit. Okay. So what we're proposing is I'm going to eliminate this wraparound uh, of this deck area um, by re and reduce an additional 39 square feet of lock coverage um, and just maintain the portion that's directly behind the house. Um, also, um, what I'm requesting from the board is that in this amendment, I would like to make this section solid um, with a solid foundation, um, you know, again, uh, for protection from headlights and also to make it a little bit more uh, private and secure. Um, because if you can see here in this, uh, in this photograph, this balcony, uh, this cantilever balcony is literally 10 feet yeah. away from this, this yeah. deck. Okay. Um, so, you know, I, I was looking to, you know, have a little bit of protection and carrying this roof line down and picture framing, you know, this, this outdoor space. All right. Cool. It's really, it's really not ideal. Um, it, it wouldn't be something that if you had to create, um, you wouldn't create this condition from, from, uh, from, from new construction. And that is just a first floor. It, uh, it will, it will continue a little bit of a roof line. It's not going all the way up, obviously. To yes, the, of course. That, that, that is it. only a, a continuation of the roof line here at the first floor. Do you have a rendering of that of that elevation, that side? No, I do not. Okay. My apologies for that. All right. Um, to, oh, sorry, Russell, are you done? I think I am, thank you. Um, to piggyback off that, are there any lights that are gonna be on the exterior of the house in the uh, rear, so what, facing west? Not, not, not on the rear of the house, no, we're not proposing any lights there. Can you go back to your rendering of that side of the house? The southern or the northern side? I guess it'd be the western. The western side. Uh, the two-dimensional elevations then. Here. And where's that, the thing you were just talking about? This will be the, the new um, opaque railing with a privacy fence now. Because once you, once you remove that kitchen area, you're now inviting people to walk down this driveway and just jump right onto this deck. Um, it's, it's not very secure. 
Um, so again, this provides a little bit more protection, um, you know, if this is an opaque railing with a six foot high privacy fence here. Rather than? Rather than an open balustrade um, that runs from here all the way through and back around the house. Um, it, it, it's, it's definitely not appropriate and, and really uh, not private and not secure. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the other board members? All right, seeing no other questions from the other board members. I'm assuming, Don, all your questions are answered at this point? Donna? Sorry, unmuted. Yes, I am good, thank you. Okay, so then I will open it up to the general public. Irina, do we have anybody in the public with their hand raised? Yes, we do. Thank you, Chris. We have one person, Mr. Tim Lynch. Please go ahead and ask your question only for this witness only. How you doing? Steve Lynch, I live right next door. We're at 1209 Berg. We're the little yellow house. Um, Could you speak up, Mr. Lynch? I can barely hear you. Sure. Uh, my name's Timothy Lynch. I live at 1209 Berg, right next door, the little yellow house right next door. How you doing, Anthony? Nice to I'm meet very, you. I'm yeah, very nice uh, to meet you, finally. Thank you. Okay. Um, anyway, I love what you're doing with the house. It's absolutely beautiful. I've been there for 11 years. I've dealt with this house um, being a, a eyesore um, with probably up to 20 people living in this house at one point in time. Um, and I've also dealt with the water running off that roof. Um, so, uh, I'm going to ask you to put gutters on for the main reason what's been happening over all these years is the water kind of ski slopes off that roof and gains quite a bit of speed and actually pummels my house, um, with water. So when we get the heavy downpours, it's unbelievable. The amount of damage, it goes right down into my basement. Um, it actually has rotted out my Bilko door, which one of your build, one of your, uh, workers actually fell through the other day which I had to go down there and fix it which is fine I understand and we're going to work together but um but yet yeah, I know it's going to be a little bit of a architectural drawback but there really absolutely has to be gutters on that side to get the water from not hammering my house anymore so I'm going to ask you to do that for me everything else I love about the house Mr. I think Mr. Lynch I'm so sorry to interrupt you but if you can please hold your comments until the very end of the testimonies. Um, oh. Right now, we are only taking questions specifically to Mr. Vanderbilt's testimony. Do you have any you. questions for him? Well, I mean, the question is, uh, can we get gutters on the side of that house um, that's on my side and get that water channeled away through piping um, to get it away from that whole side of the house? You asked it, Mr. Lynch. Let, let Mr. Vandermark respond. Sure. Uh, Mr. Lynch, uh, uh, it is a pleasure to meet you, and I, and I certainly want to be a good neighbor. And, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll try to find a low-profile gutter, um, you know, to put on that roof line, and I will divert the water away from your house. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. You're very welcome. Thank you, Mr. Lynch. Okay. Do we, do we have anybody else... Irina, in the public with their hand raised. I do not show anyone else. Thank you, Mr. Avalani. All right. Um, so, Mr. Vandermilk, thank you much. Thank you very much for your testimony. Uh, Mr. Karras, you can proceed. It's a determination by the board whether or not they want me to go ahead, present my planning testimony, or first make a determination as to whether or not we need a D2 variance. I'm good either way. So. Typically, any expansion of basic law is if you expand a non-conforming use or non-conforming structure, it typically requires a, a, a D2. When in doubt, whether you think it is, the expansion is substantial enough to meet that threshold, that's that Lerns case. We went through that case over on, for Mr. Siegel's property a few months right. back. We determined 20 versus 21 units. We used the same criteria. In the interpretation, you looked at the qualitative uh, expansion. Uh, this that case is a little different from this because this definitely has some numbers attached to it, uh, and uh, you know it's your call. Uh, and in the alternative, 
if you do determine it's a it's a D2, obviously by the comments that have been made, I'm going to go out on a limb here. Obviously, by the comments that have been made by all the board members and the next door neighbor, uh, everyone likes the project, and the applicant has agreed to address the issue of the water runoff for the next door neighbor. That's so, irrespective of whether or not it's a D2. Um, yeah. The comments and certainly the uh, stipulations that we've agreed to, um, right. certainly we're agreeing to. In terms of whether or not some expansion, we're reducing the footprint. The only potential expansion um, is physically that dormer, right. but the net is a decrease in the overall size of the building. So I would. So so, so I I agree with you, Mr. Karras. Um, I, I think you know we should at least poll the board, see how they feel about whether this is an expansion of a non, uh, or an exacerbating a non-conforming use uh, by expansion of the dormer. So I, I think the best way to proceed is we get some comments back from the board and see where we go from there. Sure, Paul the board. Very good. So let, let's, I'll start with Russell. I do not think it meets the threshold. I don't think it, it, it exacerbates the um, that rule. Okay, Brittany. Um, I'm, I'm kind of torn, but I think I'm happy that a little bit of the building coverage is going down and that the FAR is slightly going down. So in that case, I don't think it's making it worse, but I do think there's still some architectural things that Donna brought up that I don't know. No, that's, that's a separate part. issue, Brittany. Oh, yeah, right now we're just, yeah, that, that's a totally a different issue. Right now we're talking about whether it's exacerbating the non-conforming okay. use of the property. So I don't think strictly it is. from that, okay. Jill. I do not feel that it's um, continuing it, expanding it. Okay. Um, Tim. You have to unmute yourself, Tim. Audio, there we go. I, I'm good with it. I don't think it exasperates it at all. Mr. Harris. I don't think it exacerbates it. You know, the FAR is going down, so I'm fine with it. Christopher. I'm okay with it. And Catherine. I'm okay with it. I don't think it exasperates it. Bonnie. Uh, there's no real expansion of GLA or living space, so uh, I think it's fine. And personally, I, I do not feel it's a it exacerbates the non-performing use to any great degree either. So we can move on, Mr. Karras. Well, why don't we do that in the form of a motion, a second, right. and we'll, we'll formalize right. what we just did, just formalize it. Okay, so I, I make a formal motion that uh, this does not exacerbate the non-conforming use of this property. This is Russell Lewis, I'll second. Thank you. I have a motion by Christopher Avalone and a second by Russell Lewis. Uh, Daniel Harris. Yes. Brittany Ashman. Yes. Christopher Gonzalez. Yes. Joe Potter. Yes. Tim Slick. Yes. Catherine Minervini. Yes. I'm not going to call on Bonnie Knack to vote. At, she is an alternate. Um, and Russell Lewis. Yes. And Christopher Avalone. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So, Mr. Garris, you have your answer. On an expansion of a non-conforming use, and we've agreed to certain uh, design revisions, which you can include within that resolution, and we're fine. Sure. I, I, why don't I reiterate what I have, and then you can help me. Uh, number one, uh, app, the witness and applicant has testified that the HVAC units will be screened. Number two, the door in the bathroom, in the garage, the existing bathroom that's going to be downsized to be converted to a pocket door. And the man door will be revised to swing out versus in. Uh, the fence on the south side is going to be changed from plastic vinyl to what? A uh, wooden picket fence. Okay, let me write that down. Um, maybe not pick it, uh, like make a, like a shadow box board on board fence, uh, pick it, um, it has a definition of spikes. Right. right. It's not going to be okay. an open 
fence. It'll be a solid fence. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, just a reference to Donna's report, which I'll talk to her about. The planters, uh, the density, as per Donna's recommendation on page five, 4.1 and 4.2. Applicant has agreed to comply with those recommendations. Hold on one sec. Is that what the board is uh, looking for, those design revisions with regards to the plantings? Yes. Everyone? Yes. 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 Okay. okay. Uh, stormwater. Uh, this is where I'm a little confused. Stormwater versus gutters. Maybe it's two distinct issues. Stormwater, Donna's recommendation. Was oh, that? So, sorry, Jack. Uh, it's Donna. Um, no, so no, sorry, you help me. I, I could use the help. Yeah. So the neighbor is asking for on the north side yes. that a gutter be employed. Yes. Uh, obviously, that's going to have a downspout. That should be directed toward the planter area. Got it. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll develop that, but I have that as the next one. Uh, gutter to move water away from Mr. Lynch's house as per what Donna described, how it would work. Anthony, are you good with that? I am, yeah, I am okay with that. Yeah, because she, she mouthed it out, but I couldn't write that fast. But it sounded good, I'll tell you that. It sounded, good. It sounded like it would fix the problem. And uh, that's what I have. We're good. Okay, so I assume everyone will vote in the affirmative to make those conditions of the uh, positive vote that this is not an expansion of a non-conforming use. Do I have Wait, any? I'd like to vote? add one. Okay. Um, I think there was a part two to that stormwater, right? Wasn't it pervious pavement instead of- Yeah, that's what I was asking Donna about. Did we discuss that? I think I actually cut you off, Andrew, when you started talking about that. We discuss the pervious. Hold on. I think we got sidetracked by the me describing a stone trench, and I don't know that we actually resolved if the driveway will be a permeable pavement or if it's just going to be regular uh, okay. concrete. Yeah, four point three. Anthony, do you want to address that the pavement on the driveway? Um, recommendation is to make it permeable. Uh, if, if the board sees fit, if that's something um, that is, that you know will will sway the approval, then it's something that I will agree to. Um, uh, you know, I am not uh, locked into uh, a concrete driveway. It's fine. I would feel strongly for that since you are at sixty six percent building coverage, and fine. what's required is twenty five. That's fine. Yep. Is that the unanimous consen uh, consensus of the board for that additional condition? Yes. I'm good with that. I would Anyone agree with against? That. Anyone opposed? No? Okay. Fine. So uh, that will be uh, another condition of the approval. We're good. Application approved. Thank you. All right. Everybody have a good night and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, Jack? Yes. We didn't have public comment, did we? No. No, no we did sorry not. about that, but I think Mr. Uh, we'll get Mr. Lynch back in. He didn't make want to say more. Yeah. yeah. Well, but actually, you, since a D2 variance is not required. I don't know that there's public comment on an interpretation. Yeah, there right. really wasn't. But we already know his comment. Yeah. We know right. it. We're okay. Unless he wants to add something, but. Well, well, unless there's somebody else in the audience. Is there anybody else? that we didn't hear from Irina. There is no one else. Um, would you like me to unmute Mr. Lynch just to see if he had any other comments? Uh, Andy, you don't, I assume you don't mind. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Lynch, go ahead. Uh, let, me, let me speak to him. Mr. Lynch. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah Jack Serpico, board attorney. Okay. Uh, I, I believe we um, addressed your concerns. Yes, it sounds like you did. Okay, and I did understand you to say during the question and answer period that you were overwhelmingly in favor of the project absolutely. Uh, subject to the drainage situation, uh, the water runoff being fixed. Absolutely. Yeah. It looks like he's doing a great job. Okay. So just a quick question, Jack, does he need to be sworn in before, uh, I, with I, that? I, we're fine. We're okay. He, I'm, okay. Just, I'm just, I'm just recharacterizing his testimony that he made during the hearing. It's okay. okay. We're, fine. We're, fine. we're fine. Okay. Thank uh, you. All, if everybody's happy, I'm happy. <laughs> Okay. I'm I'm very happy. I look forward to this project happening. Okay. It's it's quite it's quite beautiful, Mr. Vandermark.
Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. Thanks. Yes. All right. So I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second. Hey, I have a motion by uh, Christopher Avalone and a second by Brittany Ashman. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Any opposed? Thank you. Yeah, not meeting everyone. adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Good, Good luck, Mr. Vandermark, with Thank your house. You. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Sure.